Hey everybody, Home Slice Hunter here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at one of the rarest legendary Pokemon in the entire Master League, Level 50 Zamazenta. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, Erickson, so many thanks for the battle submission. Zamazenta is a pure fighting type Pokemon with the moveset of Snarl, Crunch, and Close Combat. With Snarl and Crunch, it's well positioned to handle the Necrozma meta shift, and with Close Combat, it has a great nuke move for Dialga. I believe it hasn't been in raids since 2022, making it a very rare Pokemon to see. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and take a look at level 50 Zamazenta in the Master League. Hopping into the first match, picking up a decent lead, Kiram vs. Ho-Oh. Great to see the flying type on the lead with having the fighting type Zamazenta in the back. Kiram plays to a pretty risky CMP tie there, CMP tying an incinerate user, but luckily, Ho-Oh loves to throw Sacred Fire right when it gets it. The Sacred Fire will be shielded by the Kiram. Kiram does get debuffed. Farming up, firing off the Dragon Claw. Is this going to be enough to KO when debuffed here? Glaciate would do more. Oh no, the Ho-Oh tanks it on 1 HP. Thanks to that attack drop. Connects with the Brave Bird and wins lead. Zamazenta gets a nice farm down. If they're leading Ho-Oh, they should have Dialga in the back. And Dialga has nowhere to run against this backline. And there it is, right on cue. Hello, Dialga. We're going to see a massive over farm by Zamazenta. Zamazenta fires off the close combat, but it's a switch and a catch onto Dusk main Necrozma. Nice catch by the opponent, but close combat still did substantial damage. We do see a defense drop from the crunch. In comes Zacian, and Zacian will be able to fire off the wild charge. Wild charge is going to be shielded up by Dusk main, and I think at this point you can just win the game with Zamazenta. I love this no shield. They still have to sun steal here. If they dark pulse, which they do, that's not going to KO. They're forced to fire off another dark pulse, and that will finally be able to KO the Zacian, but now Zamazenta is in a prime position to sweep. Zamazenta will expend the final shield as Dialga goes for the Iron Head. Zamazenta farming up to the back-to-back -back close combats. Close combat is going to do massive damage to the Dialga, picking up the KO. In comes Duskmane, going for a little bit of bad manners with the close combat, knocking out the Duskmane, and taking the win. Hopping to the next match, Kiram sees a great lead leading into Giratina. Opponent will be switching out of this matchup. They send out Duskmane, and Duskmane will be answered with Zamazenta. Zamazenta can hit for massive super effective damage with Crunch. Zamazenta, of course, still does have to be careful of a potential Sunsteel Strike, as that move is monstrously powerful. The shield from Zamazenta. This Duskmane ends up going for an Outrage. And now Zamazenta is just looking to remove Duskmane from the field of play. The Crunch Undercharge actually gets shielded, and honestly, as a Zamazenta, you can probably shield and snarl all the way down. The Outrage again from the Duskmane, Zamazenta committing to the farm down and getting the farm down. And if the opponent sends in Giratina, they are not going to appreciate this dark damage either. The Crunch will connect. We see an aggressive switch out, saving that energy and bringing in Zacian. I honestly like this play. This is a very fluid playstyle, not caring about switch advantage, but rather just trying to get an energy lead. And we're going to see Zacian firing off the player off. This is just going to straight up knock out the Giratina if they let it through, which they do. And in the back is Palkia. And Palkia is about to be in dire straits. They have to shield the play rough here. And that means the final shield goes away. Zacian trying to make it to the wild charge and gets to the wild charge. This is only neutral damage, but it's going to add up. There's a close combat available on the Zamazenta. So in comes Zamazenta, forcing the energy from the Palkia. Palkia goes for the Spatial Ren because an Aqua Tail would not KO. In comes Kiram. Kiram makes it to the Dragon Claw, and that's going to be game over there. So Palkia in an endgame up a shield can be quite scary, but against this team, this team was able to handle it. We've got same leads as match one in the next match, Kiram versus Ho-Oh once again. Kiram looking to farm up and fire off the Glaciate. Opponent does not have to shield this, but it will do some nice damage and of course come with that ever important attack drop. Ho-Oh farms up to 100. We're going to see the shield by Kiram on the Sacred Fire. Kiram going to be firing off the Dragon Claw. I don't think I saw an attack drop there, which means Claw will actually knock out here. We're going to see the shield by the opponent. They let their Ho-Oh get extremely low. And honestly, yeah, this is great. Just let this go. Get energy on Zamazenta. 
because Zamazenta will be able to get more energy here by getting two Snarls than the Zacian could have got by quick attacking down. In comes Palkia. Palkia going to be met with a close combat, and then we should see a switch into the Zacian. In comes Zacian. Palkia switches out. In the back is Dialga. So... Honestly, Ericsson's backline does seem well positioned here, but it is going to be a little bit of a tricky end game because ideally the way that the opponent wants this to go is they want to get farm on Palkia. So Ericsson has to find a way to limit farm on the Palkia and he's going to go for a wild charge. I actually like this play a lot. Wild charge won't KO, but it's going to get the Dialga low. Dialga, I think can only make an Iron Head versus the Zamazenta. And since this isn't a fairy type, it's a fighting type, Iron Head is not an issue. So Iron Head is survivable, and now you just have to double up versus the Palkia. Going to be firing off the Crunch at the Palkia. Palkia is going to end up committing the shield. Zamazenta, can it survive? Yes, it can. The Zamazenta, 1 HP, making it to the Crunch, knocking out the Palkia, and taking a very close win. We've got an interesting lead from the opponent in the next match. Kiram versus Dawn Wings. Dawn Wings is not going to be able to outpace here. Kiram able to strike first with the Glaciate, but even at minus one, a Moongeist Beam is very, very threatening. The Glaciate is going to connect the switch to Zacian and the shield as the opponent is almost assuredly full sending. They go for the Moongeist Beam. They send in Kyogre. You can farm up. Kyogre should always just wait for the Wild Charge. Oh, that's a massive misplay by the opponent. As the Kyogre player, you should not throw your energy until Zacian Wild Charges because Kyogre wins charge attack priority. So, you can wait for the Wild Charge. If you want to shield the first, you can, and then just click the Surf and CMP tie the second one. That way, you can force a shield from the Zacian. Whereas now, the opponent forced zero shields and had to give up two. So, a massive, massive change in how this mid-game could have played out because the opponent really mismanaged that mid-game. Kiram commits the shield. It only ends up being the Surf from Kyogre. In the back is Palkia, and this is looking very, very tough. Going to fire off the Dragon Claw. You have to switch here because Kiram's not going to make another move. Tries to stay in and falls just short. In comes the Zamazenta, but Zamazenta has no shields remaining. Palkia going for the Aqua Tail here. Can they make it to a Spatial Rend? I believe this is just going to be another Aqua Tail. Two Aqua Tails still do a lot of damage though, and Zamazenta. Going to have to try and clutch this. In comes Dawn Wings. Dawn Wings going to get knocked out with the Crunch. Wait, is Kyogre in close combat range? Is this doable? In comes Kyogre. It all comes down to this. Neutral close combat from the Zamazenta. Kyogre lives with fractional HP. And unfortunately, that game ends in a loss. Decent lead in the next match, Kiram versus Palkia. Kiram has a pacing advantage here. So Kiram will always be able to apply the first shielding decision of the match to the opponent. The opponent is going to let that through. We see a switch to Zacian, and Zacian is going to be answered with Duskmane. This is an uncomfortable matchup, but even at minus two defense, the Duskmane still has to go for Sunsteel. We are going to see a shield from the Zacian. The opponent ends up baiting with a Dark Pulse. That is a very unfortunate situation to get baited in, as Dark Pulse does not KO here. We're going to see the No Shield, the Dark Pulse. That's not going to cut it. The Zacian would have to lower the defense to minus four for it to KO from that range. The Wild Charge will be shielded, and Zacian is going to be able to make a third Wild Charge and actually able to apply substantial pressure and actually win the one shield versus that Necrozma. Looking to switch out into Kiram. In the back is Landorus. Opponent switching out, sending in Palkia. We see the shield from the Kiram. It is going to be the Spatial Rend. Getting the farm down. Wanting to make it to the Glaciate and getting to the Glaciate. This guarantees the final shield from the opponent and means that for the rest of the match, their attack is debuffed. They have no way of fixing that. Landorus fires off the Sandseer Storm that will be able to knock out, and from here, Zamazenta should be able to close out this game. It has a health advantage, the opponent is debuffed, and you have a Zacian if you're looking to switch out and reset the attack drops that the Landorus is about to employ. So Landorus is going to fire off the first Sandseer. We're going to see Zamazenta returning fire with the Crunch. Crunch is going to connect. We see a defense drop on the Crunch as well. Zamazenta going to be hit with another Sandseer Storm. Unfortunately, attack now at minus two. But thanks to that Crunch debuff, it's still going to be enough to knock out the Landorus and take the win. Looks like we're running back the exact same leads in the next match. Kiram versus another Palkia. 
and Kiram very happy that the Polka is deciding to stay in. Claw applies a ton of early match pressure. They're forced to commit a shield, and now we're going to see a switch out into Zacian. Opponent stays and throws energy, which is a massive surprise, as a Polkia lead should have good responses to Zacian in the back. They Aqua Tail, they switch out into Landorus, and honestly, I think the opponent would have been better off just saving the energy and bringing Lando right away, because Lando is a great response to a Zacian. Landorus should be going for a Stone Edge here. A Sandseer will not KO. They go for the Sandseer Storm, and that's a massive misplay by the opponent. As now Zacian is able to make it to the Play Rough, the Play Rough is able to knock out, and just like that, the opponent loses their entire Landorus. Looking to aggressively pivot into Zamazenta, and in the back is Dialga. Oh my goodness, Zamazenta up a shield, looking to be in a commanding position because it has so much energy. Dialga goes for the Iron Head. We're going to see the switch into the Palkia and the shield from the Zamazenta. Palkia goes for the Aqua Tail. Zamazenta going to be firing off the Crunch. I'm not sure if Crunch will be enough to knock out here. The Crunch does not KO, but the Snarl down after seals the opponent's fate. In comes Dialga, but this is not a close combat from a Zacian. Zacian does not get same type attack bonus. This is a close combat from a Zamazenta. So I don't care that that Dialga is looking healthy. Close combat smacks the Dialga, and one Dragon Breath from Kiram means game over. There's a massive problem on the lead in the next match, and its name is Zacian. This team is ABA weak to fairy. There's finally a fairy type on the lead, and this is going to be a difficult game to win. The Glaciate is able to connect. We see a switch into his own Zacian, and the opponent throws energy, which is honestly great. They go for the wild charge. They're going to send out Duskmane, and Zacian is going to look to overfarm quite significantly. Opponent needs a Sunsteel to KO here. And they will actually full send the Sun Steel, so that's a lot of energy lost, unfortunately. In comes Zamazenta. Zamazenta is going to farm up and throw on very nice charge stack timing. I honestly like the instincts there of trying to call a potential Dark Pulse, but unfortunately, the opponent actually full sent the Sun Steel, and that complicated things quite a bit. They Sun Steel again. Zamazenta now gets a full Snarl down, which is very nice. It exits with a ton of energy. The unfortunate thing is this energy doesn't go very far against the Zacian, but the Zacian was already half HP. So double close combat will be able to knock out. Zamazenta fires off the close combat. We see the shield from the opponent and it's actually a CMP tie. So Zamazenta will commit the shield. After they wild charge, it will definitely KO however, but they switch out, resetting the defense drop and sending in their Palkia. Kiram re-enters the field of play, going for the Dragon Claw, but losing CMP. That's an extremely unfortunate CMP tie. If Kiram was able to hold on to the energy and get the farm down, then it could have left the Glaciate to threaten the Zacian, but now, unfortunately, due to that CMP tie and the very nice overfarm by the opponent, this game is over. Zacian wild charges the Kiram. In comes Zamazenta, but Zamazenta just has no ability to get back-to-back -back charge attacks. Zacian... Able to defeat its, I don't know if it's a rival or a brother. They are like a pair of legendary Pokemon, but Zacian is able to emerge victorious. Back in familiar territory, leading Kiram into Palkia. A very straightforward matchup for the Kiram. Fire off the Dragon Claw right away. Opponent lets it go, and we see a switch into Zacian. Opponent responds with Ho-Oh. This is an amazing thing to bait out, because this is by no means a good response to a Zacian counter switch. Wild Charge is shielded. Oh, we see an attempt at a CMP tie, but an entire incinerate goes through. I honestly don't hate the play because the opponent did have the move loaded. They had the Brave Bird, but it always hurts when you do see that free incinerate. We're going to see Ho-Oh fire off the Brave Bird. That picks up the knockout. In comes Zamazenta looking for a full Snarl Down and gets the Snarl Down. That's a huge farm down there. Opponent in the back has Landorus. Landorus would have been the far better thing for them to send in. But this will be interesting as we have a massive energy lead on the Zamazenta. So Zamazenta is going to be able to spam out these crunches. The crunches are able to connect. Zamazenta 
Unfortunately, not going to be able to make another crunch before the Sandseer Storm is applied. The Sandseer Storm will connect the switch to Kiram. Kiram now going to be hit with a move from the Landorus. Landorus will go for the Sandseer Storm. It will not KO the switch to Palkia, but this is just going to give farm to Zamazenta. Zamazenta is going to look to shield, snarl down, and try and make it to the crunch here. Getting the farm down, exiting with the crunch... It all comes down to this. Can Crunch KO the Landorus? The Landorus has taken a lot of damage throughout the course of the match, and the Crunch just does enough, and that is a win. Hopping into the final match. This should be an interesting one. Kiram versus ho -Oh. Once again, opponent switches out instantly. They send in Dialga, and Dialga to immediately be answered with Zamazenta. Zamazenta committing an early shield on the Iron Head, and Zamazenta will look to farm up to the back-to-back -back close combats before unleashing this damage. Close combat should just about one-hit KO the Dialga. Close combat is gonna land, and that's good night for the Dialga. In comes Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh does not have to shield crunches. The crunch damage will add up over time. They end up shielding the first, maybe being unfamiliar with the moveset of Zamazenta, because to be fair, when was the last time you saw Zamazenta in the Master League? Crunch does get the defense drop, and in comes Kiram. Kiram. Now faced with a choice, only one shield remaining, going to use it here on the Brave Bird. In the back is Zarud, and that's about the perfect Pokemon that you could see here. Zarud, not going to appreciate Glaciate. Glaciate permanently debuffs them and does massive damage. They're going to fire off a Dark Pulse, but Kiram does not care about this damage at all. The Dark Pulse connects. Kiram, not worried in the slightest. They can fire off another Dark Pulse. I don't even think this quite KOs Kiram. The Dark Pulse connects. Kiram barely able to hang on. In comes Zacian. Zacian gets a big quick attack farm down. In comes Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh now going to be forced to burn the final shield here with this Wild Charge. The Wild Charge. They end up letting it go. Just saying, you know what? I don't think there's a way I can win it. So they end up no shielding. And that is game over. All in all, these were some very fun battles, so many thanks to Ericsson for sending them in. Zamazenta is a Pokemon that I would love if it got to return to raids, because it's been absolute ages since it has been in raids. I think at least two full years. So Zamazenta's return is long overdue. Even if they just bring it back without a shiny, I'd be thrilled because I would love an opportunity to get the XLs. Because especially in a meta where they added two Pokemon that have a Psychic subtyping that are as strong as Duskmane and Dawnwings, having a Pokemon that has access to Snarl and Crunch is very cool and also has the close combat for Dialga. So I think this is probably the best Master League meta we've had for Zamazenta. It's still like an anti-meta pick as far as the Master League goes, but as we saw here, it can actually get wins now. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.